Hello and welcome to my patchness rundown for the 11th of April. This week's update introduces the Slayer expansion to the Fort for in 3 content along with a few additions to the Undead category that now work with the Salve Amulet and some pretty notable ability changes. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Skeletal creatures including Skeletal Wyverns will now work for Skeleton and Undead Slayer tasks. Banshees will now work for Ghost and Undead Slayer tasks. Edimu will now work for Ghost, Zombie and Undead Slayer tasks. Salvamir now works at Barrows and Rise of the Six. Remember that this is a 20% increase to damage as well as accuracy. Accuracy being the more notable one as the Rise of the Six brothers are notorious for having really high defense. This is a great addition as it makes the now outdated content more accessible by lower level players who want to try it out without splashing constantly. Added an undead cluster task to Lanakea. Rack now deals 40 to 140% ability damage. If the target is bound or stunned, it deals 52 to 182% ability damage. Just a disclaimer before I go into any of these ability changes, I'm just looking at raw damage without taking into consideration additional effects or situational use cases, so take everything with a grain of salt. All of these ability changes come with a significant increase to their minimum hit, which is something I like considering how massive the hit range of abilities are. Shout out to my assault hitting 5k 4 times in a row during my berserk rotation. The only downside is since Rack has become the filler ability to magic where Sonic Wave used to sit, you can no longer freely control your Rack and Ruin execution as easily. I also decided to include the comparison of Rack on stun targets as it's the most realistic one of all the styles to benefit from since you can cast ice spells to stun the target prior. The minimum hit was increased while the maximum was decreased slightly but overall it deals 3.7% more damage on average. Piercing Shot now hits twice and each hit deals 35-55% to ability damage. If the target is bound or stunned, each hit deals 45.5-71.5% to ability damage. Even though this doesn't match up to Dazing Shot, which it shouldn't in my opinion, it does have situational usage over it since it does hit twice, which is synergistic with the Bolt and Arrow core identity of range. Slice now deals 75-115% to ability damage. If the target is bound or stunned, it deals 105-161% to ability damage. Punish now has a 24 second cooldown and deals 50 to 100% ability damage. If the target is below 50% health, it deals 125 to 250% ability damage. This ability is objectively really powerful, but with the cooldown being as high as it is, I can't imagine it making a big difference overall. I like this model of balance where an ability is very powerful situationally, but has a high cooldown. Concentrate Blast and Sonic Wave now share a cooldown. I really don't like this change, to be blunt. One of the reasons you'd have shared cooldowns between abilities is if it introduces a situational decision or gameplay preference. A perfect example for this is Divert vs Resonance. In most situations, Divert is objectively better to use if you're able to take advantage of the adrenaline, but most people still use Resonance because it suits their playstyle, including myself in some cases where I want to focus on learning the boss rather than tunneling on my sustainability, which is the beauty of ability diversity. Another reason you'd have a shared cooldown is in cases where it would be overpowered. Now, I don't use the word overpowered lightly, and this would be so far from that, even if they didn't share a cooldown. Considering the only power increase you'd see is if the player is using both dual wield and staff, Sonic Wave would effectively be used as a filler ability, and the damage increase from its greater variant is so small that it would probably impact the overall damage by less than 0.1%. What I would have liked to come from this was for Greater Sonic to be competitive against Greater Concentrated Blast, for there to be a meaningful choice based on playstyle and preference very similar to Divert and Resonance. If Greater Sonic Wave is intended to be significantly worse than Greater Concentrated Blast, then the shared cooldown should be reverted. Finally, 
before I move on, another point that has been brought up constantly in the community is the fact that Greater Concentrated Blast is a boss drop and more expensive than the counterpart of Greater Sonic Wave, which comes commonly from Slayer and is already cheaper. Based on that logic, do you think Divert should just be better than Resonance for everyone in almost every case just because it's a boss drop and Resonance is unlocked by leveling for free? I would imagine people wouldn't like that. So why would that be the case for these two abilities? The Order of the Wilderness Sword teleport options has been readjusted. Teleport to Edgewall will be the first option and will activate when used from the action bar. And that's it for this week's patch notes. Overall, I like the update, but I can't help but find myself frustrated with not understanding why they went through with introducing Greater Sonic Wave as a much worse alternative to Greater Concentrated Blast, while also locking them with a shared cooldown. Anyway, that's it from me. Thank you for watching and take care.